okay, your candidates are in position. They're ready to take the exam. The proctor reads, work area and client preparation and setup of supplies, 10 minutes. You will prepare your work area for your client. You will set up the universal supplies you will use throughout the examination. You will also set up the supplies for haircutting section of the examination. You will prepare your client for services. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you're instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated for the candidates just like they were in cosmetology, and then your candidates are told you may begin. The candidates will be evaluated on the following task, that they disinfect their work areas completely with the product labeled in English as an EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant. Again, just like in cosmetology, uh, we will have no spray disinfectants within our test sites any longer, just wipes only. Uh, the wipes must meet the uh, EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant um, wipes. They must be bactericidal, fungicidal, and viricidal. Again, those wipes should have a manufacturer's label attached, and it should be in English. If there's a shortage in your particular area and you need to simulate, we're asking that you simply get some other form of wipes. It could be baby wipes. You could put those in a Ziploc bag. You can go to uh, an approved uh, EPA registered disinfectant and download their label, attach that label to the uh, Ziploc bag, and this would constitute as a simulated or an approved simulated disinfected wipe. The candidate is required to sanitize their hands with product labeled in English. Again, this, this hand sanitizer should be um, a real product. It should have the manufacturer's label attached to it. The candidates are required to sanitize their hands. This is not a simulated process. They must sanitize their hands. And then the universal supplies should all be labeled in English. Again, as I stated before, the candidates have a three bag system in this exam as well. Trash, items to be disinfected, and soiled linens. The candidates should set those bags up prior to uh, disinfecting their workspace. Once they set those up, they should retrieve their disinfectant wipes out of their dry storage kit and then disinfect that workspace in its entirety, um, making sure that all areas that they come in contact with are disinfected. Once they've done this, they can dispose of that wipe within the trash of their three bag system. Items to be disinfected, soil, linens, and trash should be disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. Once all of the candidates have achieved this and they've stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. With the haircutting portion of the exam, this is 40 minutes, the proctor reads to the candidates. You will perform a tapered haircut with no block line at the nape. You will demonstrate clipper cutting with and without guard or detachable blades. You will demonstrate the use of shear over comb. You will demonstrate finger and shear cutting. You will cut at least one half inch of hair throughout the haircut. You will be expected to complete and blend the haircut. You will also be expected to shave both sides of the neck with a straight razor. Do not remove your hair clippings from your work area until you're instructed individually by the examiner to do so. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You'll have 40 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have 20 minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. Again, the instructions are always repeated twice for the candidates, and then they are told, you may begin. The candidates are evaluated to make sure that their haircutting supplies are labeled in English, that all of the implements and supplies are visibly clean. Again, um, barbers are very notorious for wanting to be able to demonstrate that they can do this tapered haircut. A lot of times they'll practice this up until the very last hour prior to coming to the exam site. We're asking you to remind your candidate to please clean and disinfect their supplies and um, implements uh, prior to coming to the uh, test site. The, the barber now is 
uh, asked to perform a hair and scalp analysis. The barber should section the hair horizontally and then section it vertically to demonstrate that they are performing a hair and scalp analysis. The candidate should demonstrate the safe use of the clipper and comb without guard or detachable blade. All of the clippers that are used in this exam should have a cord attached. We know that the cordless clippers are very popular in today's times, but the candidate should attach that cord that's used to charge the clipper to that cordless clipper and use it in that way. That cord should not be bound in any way. It should not be wrapped around the wrist or the forearm of that candidate. It should not be thrown over the shoulder of the candidate. It should be allowed to hang and dangle where the candidate can use it without striking the client in the face in the process of performing their task. They are required to demonstrate the clipper um, without um, the comb or guard. The candidate should demonstrate the safe use of the clippers with a guard or detachable blade. Again, there's no particular area, no certain percentage of time in either of these areas that the candidate is required to use a, a guard or no guard or a clipper over comb technique. They must do it in a way that the examiner can see them do it where they're being safe and not to hurt themselves or not to injure their client. The candidate must demonstrate the safe use of the comb and shear. Again, uh, there's no particular air area that the candidate must demonstrate the safe use of the comb and shear, but they must be able to use it in a safe manner. Uh, the cutting edge of the shear should never come in contact with the skin of the client. The candidate is required to maintain the drape at all times. If that drape were to sag or, or fall, the candidate should immediately reposition the drape and then continue on with the task. If the mannequin head was to come off the mannequin stand and fall onto the floor, if the drape is still attached, the candidate can just simply go and pick up the head, reposition it on the mannequin stand, sanitize their hands and continue on with the task. If for some reason the drape becomes um, disconnected, uh, the candidate is required to re-drape the mannequin in its entirety. That drape that fell off should go into soiled linens and then a new drape from the dry storage kit should be applied in the proper manner. The candidate must establish an outline around the ears. Again, the hair is wefted into the mannequin, which means that the, um, hair, the hairline is pretty prominent there, but the candidate should use either a clipper, the shear, or an outliner to demonstrate going up and over the ear in a safe manner to where the cutting edge of the blade of the uh, clippers are not coming in contact with the ears to injure the client. The candidates are required to shave the sides of the neck using the straight razor to include the reverse backhand stroke. If the candidate is right-handed, the mannequin is facing away from the candidate. On the right-hand side in the neck region, if they're right-handed, they can use that freehand stroke on the right side and then the reverse backhand stroke on the left side. If the candidate is predominantly left-handed, they will use the freehand stroke on the left side and then the reverse backhand stroke on the right side. The candidate is not required to use steam towels in this particular area. Uh, just uh, simply lather the area and then perform the strokes. Once the candidates have stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. Please do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. At this time, the examiner is gonna go to your first candidate. They'll hold their hand out and they'll ask this question to your candidate. May I please use your comb to check the haircut? We're requesting that your candidate please hand the examiner the comb so that they can check the haircut the appropriate way. In checking the haircut, the examiner is looking to make sure that the hair in front of the ear is uniform in length, that the haircut blends without weight lines, and they're looking around on the floor and in the work area to make sure that the candidate has cut at least one half inch of hair throughout the haircut. Once they've evaluated your candidate, they'll give these instructions to please clean up your hair at this time. Upon completion, please do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. At that time, 
they're looking at the area to make sure that your candidate has removed all of their uh, hair from their work area. They swept up their area very nice and thorough and they disposed of that hair within their trash within their own three bag system. They're looking also the examiners to make sure that your candidate has maintained the drape throughout the section and all items to be disinfected, soil, linens and trash were disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. Again, making sure that the hair that the candidate swept up was disposed of in their own three bag system. There's no hair or anything that's left within the work area. Once all of the candidates have been evaluated and have been scored, the proctor reads, all examiners have indicated that they're ready to proceed. Work area and new client preparation and setup of supplies, 15 minutes. You will break down your work area and dispose of supplies used in the previous sections of this examination. You will prepare your work area for a new client. You will set up the universal supplies you will use for the remainder of the examination. You will also set up the supplies for the shaving with the straight razor section of the examination. You will prepare your client for a shave. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you're instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are always repeated twice for the candidates and then they're told you may begin. The candidates will be evaluated in the following areas to make sure that all disinfected areas were completely uh, done with the product that's labeled in English as an EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant. Again, we're only using wipes as disinfectant uh, in our exams now. No aerosol or no pump spray disinfectants. The candidates must use an EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant. This disinfectant must be bactericidal, fungicidal, and viricidal. We're asking also um, that if there are no products in the area, that the candidate, if the candidate was forced to simulate this, that they would get maybe, for example, baby wipes, place those baby wipes in a large Ziploc bag, go to an approved EPA registered disinfectant website, download their label and attach that label to the Ziploc bag that the baby wipes are in. This would be an approved simulated disinfectant wipe. The candidates are required to sanitize their hands with product labeled in English. This is not a simulated process. The candidates are required to sanitize their hands with a real product. The product should be labeled in English and it should have a manufacturer's label. The universal supplies should also be labeled in English. The candidate is required to disinfect their work area completely. Um, any item that they're bringing from client one to client two must be disinfected in its entirety. For example, the water bottle, if they were to bring that over from client one to client two, it should be disinfected on every surface on the bottom, the sides, and also the top and spray handle for that pump spray bottle of water. Um, and then it should be placed in a clean disinfected area. Once the candidates have disinfected the area and set up all of their universal supplies for the remainder of the examination, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. Shaving with the straight razor, variable timing. You will prepare to perform shaving with the straight razor. You will prepare the model's face by lathering and steam. Do not remove the steam towel until instructed to do so by the examiner. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You have five minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you're instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are repeated and the candidates are told you may begin. The candidates are evaluated to make sure that the shaving supplies are labeled in English, that they set up implements and supplies that are visibly clean. The candidate is required to lather the beard and mustache area. This includes the entire beard and mustache area. The candidates should use the pads of their fingertips and apply it in a circular motion to cover that entire area. A steam towel is applied. The candidates should sanitize their hands 
prior to entering the simulated steam cabinet, the candidate should remove a steam towel in a damp condition and then close that, simu that simulated steam cabinet. The candidate is required to wring out any excess uh, water from that steam towel and then test the temperature of that on their wrist or either their forearm. They're, they're to do this prior to applying it to the client's face. Once the candidates have applied the steam towel and have stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. Please do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. You will perform shaving with the straight razor. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You will be instructed individually by the examiner when to remove the towel, relather, and begin the shave. This is an untimed section. Do not remove the steam towel or demonstrate any strokes until instructed individually by the examiner to do so. The instructions are repeated. The examiner will go to your first candidate and give these instructions. Please remove the steam towel, relather, and demonstrate the first five shave strokes. The candidate is required to remove the steam towel and relather. In removing the steam towel, the towel should be removed in a circular manner, starting at the upper forehead area and then in a circular pattern, removing it all the way around to the opposite side of the face. The candidate must relather. Um, in removing the steam towel, the candidate should not purpose themselves to remove the lather um, or the lather residue from the client's face as to the client, the candidate will be required to relather. In the relathering process, the candidate should use their fingertips in a circular motion to relather the entire beard and mustache area. The candidate is required to demonstrate the freehand stroke in area one. This freehand stroke should start in the um, sideburn region and it should go about to the middle of the jaw region. That should be a freehand stroke. In Shaving area number two is a backhand stroke. That backhand stroke should start at the middle part of the jaw and it should go over to the corner of the mouth. In shaving area number three, that is a freehand stroke. The candidate should start at the middle part of the mustache and work their way over to the corner of the mouth in a downward uh, stroke. In shaving area number four is a freehand stroke as well. The candidate should start from the jawline and should go to that first crease in the neck. This is a freehand stroke. In shaving area number five, this is a reverse freehand stroke. The candidate should slightly position themselves behind um, the, can the client's head and then drawing the razor or the sharp edge of the blade towards themselves to demonstrate the reverse freehand stroke from the upper neck region to that crease in the neck. Once they have been evaluated and have been scored, the next instructions to them from the examiner would be, please do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. Once, once all of the candidates have removed the steam towel, they've relathered and they've demonstrated the first five shave strokes and they've been evaluated and scored, the proctor reads, all examiners have indicated that they're ready to proceed. Do not demonstrate any additional shave strokes. You will perform the finishing steps of the service. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You have five minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. Again, the instructions are always repeated twice for the candidates and they're told you may begin. The candidates are required to complete the shave service. At this time, the candidate will reapply a steam towel. Prior to applying that steam towel, the candidate should sanitize their hands, enter into the simulated towel cabinet, <coughs> close that towel cabinet, and then wring out any excess water from that uh, steam towel. They should test that towel on their wrist or on their forearm, and then they should apply that towel to the client's face. They should remove that towel and at the same time, remove the residue 
from the, uh, the, shave the shaving cream residue from the client's face. They can then do a towel wrap on their hand to get in the more integral areas of the um, client's face to assure that they're not getting shaving cream in the ears, nose, mouth, in those particular areas. Once they've removed all of the shave cream, the candidate is required to do one, two, or all three of these areas, but they must do at least one. They could use a talc powder, they can use an astringent, and they can use a moisturizer. Again, the talc powder is used sometimes to remove clipped hair that's stuck to the client's skin. An astringent sometimes may not always be uh, desired by the client, but is used to close the pores of the client's skin. And then the moisturizer is used to add moisture back to the client's face. Sometimes using steam towels and soap would dry the client's skin out, so they may request that uh, the candidate apply a moisturizer. The candidate must do one, two, or all three of these areas in completing the shave service. In the process of completing the shave service, the examiner is looking to make sure that your candidate has maintained the drape throughout the section and that items to be disinfected, soil linens, and trash were disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. For an example, that steam towel that was used earlier in the, this portion of the exam, all steam towels should go into soil linens. They should not be placed within the candidate's work area. Once they have been used, they should immediately be disposed of in the uh, soil linen area of their three bag system. Once all of the candidates have been evaluated, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. The blood exposure procedure. You will demonstrate the blood exposure procedure. You will imagine the following scenario. During a service, you have sustained a minor cut to your index finger. The injury is such that you can continue the service. Your work area or your client has not been contaminated. You are expected to demonstrate the proper procedure for blood exposure. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are repeated. Your candidates are told you may begin. The candidates are evaluated on the following task, that the blood exposure supplies are labeled in English. The candidate is required to sanitize their hands and then remove the materials from the first aid kit. Also, the candidate is required to cleanse and um, clean that injured area with an antiseptic. Then the candidate must cover that area with the dressing that is absorbent and secure. The candidate wears gloves or a finger guard. And then the candidate should dispose of all contaminated supplies directly into the trash of their three bag system. Again, in the changes within the blood exposure procedure, the candidates have an option to either wear gloves to enter into that first aid kit, or they can sanitize their hands prior to entering into the first aid kit. The candidate is required to remove those supplies from the first aid kit, close the first aid kit. The candidate should never work directly out of the first aid kit. If doing so, they would be marked off. The candidate must, again, cleanse that area with an antiseptic and then uh, secure it with a uh, bandage that is secure and absorbent. They must place a finger guard or a glove over the injured area or the injured hand. Then they should dispose of all contaminated supplies directly in the trash within their three bag system. Again, the candidates are not required to use the clear Ziploc bag to dispose of the items. The government agencies have changed the outlook on this and we follow what the government agencies do. So therefore, it's no longer required that the candidate dispose of these contaminated supplies within a clear Ziploc bag. They can just place them directly into the trash of their three bag system. Once each candidate has been evaluated and scored, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. 
You will break down your work area and dispose of supplies used in the previous sections of this examination. You will set up the supplies for the following sections of the examination. Chemical waving, predisposition and strand test, chemical relaxer, virgin application, hair color retouch application. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You have 10 minutes to complete this setup. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you're instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated and the candidates are told you may begin. Chemical waving, 20 minutes. You will perform chemical waving. You will prepare your client for services. You will wrap the entire center back section of the head from the crown to the nape. Once you're finished wrapping, please step back and do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You'll have 20 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have 10 minutes remaining. Do not perform the saturation procedure, a test curl, or remove a rod until instructed individually by the examiner to do so. Do not remove the remaining rods until you're instructed to do so. Step back to indicate that you have finished. Instructions are repeated and your candidate is told you may begin. All of the candidates are evaluated to make sure that all of their chemical waiting supplies are labeled in English. Implements and supplies should be visibly clean. The candidates are tasked with performing a scalp and hair analysis. The candidates should section the hair vertically and then section it horizontally to indicate that they're performing the proper hair and scalp analysis. The candidates should subsection the hair for chemical waving. For example, if the rod is one inch in diameter, the candidate should not subsection the hair any wider than one inch. The panel of hair should not exceed two thirds the length of the rod itself. The candidate is required to wrap the hair. There's no particular way um, to wrap the hair using a, a single wrap, a double wrap, or a bookend wrap. The candidate um, um, can use either or. Uh, this is a technique. We don't score the candidates on technique, but they're required to use the end wrap in the correct manner to demonstrate that there's no hair that would stick or go beyond the end wrap in the process of wrapping the hair. The correct rod placement should be used throughout the entire section, meaning that the candidate should start, or if they started with on-base rod placement, that on-base rod base placement should be used throughout the entire section. They should not um, do any piggybacks or brick lays, just a basic perm wrap. Once the candidate have finished wrapping, if there's time still on the clock, the candidate should immediately put the protective cream in place. If they're using cotton quail, they can use cotton quail in that particular area. And then the candidate should place their gloves on and then step back. This would help to speed up the process of the exam. Once the candidates have stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination Please do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. The examiner is going to go to your first candidate and give these instructions. Please demonstrate the saturation procedure. The candidate is required to saturate all of the rods from the crown to the nape. It is recommended that your candidate hold a towel at that last rod to catch any simulated perm solution uh, to assure that no product or no simulated product will go on the floor. If that product enters or go on the floor, the candidate should stop immediately, clean the area, sanitize their hands, and then continue on with their task. They should never allow any um, item or any product or any water to stay on the floor without um, picking it up or cleaning it up immediately, sanitizing their hands, and then continuing on with their task. The next instruction from the examiner would be, please demonstrate a test curl. The candidate is required to demonstrate a test curl by removing the rod one and a half revolutions and then placing the rod back in position, snapping the band and the end cap back into the rod. The next instruction would be, please remove one rod from the hair. The candidate could easily remove any rod within the section from the crown to the nape, even the rod that they did, the 
test curl. Once they've completed this area, the proctor reads, all examiners have indicated that they are ready to proceed. Once all of the candidates have been evaluated and they've been scored, the proctor reads, you will remove all remaining rods from the head and create four quadrant sections for the remaining chemical services. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You'll have five minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are repeated for the candidates and they are told, you may begin. The candidates should maintain the drape throughout the section. Again, if the drape were to sag or if it were to come down completely, the candidates should stop immediately, reposition the drape, and then continue on with their task. All items to be disinfected, soil, linens, and trash should all be disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. For example, the perm rods should go in items to be disinfected. The end wraps should all go in the trash. Once the candidates have been evaluated and stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. Predisposition test and strand test with simulated product, 10 minutes. You will complete a predisposition and strand test. You will demonstrate the predisposition test behind the ear. You will demonstrate the strand test process on any uh, area of the head. There is no required wait time for results. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are repeated. The candidates are told, you may begin. The predisposition and strand test supplies are evaluated to make sure that all are labeled in English and that the implements and supplies are visibly clean. The candidate should demonstrate the predisposition test behind the ear. Again, the candidate should always cleanse the area with a mild cleanser. This should not be anything that contains alcohol. For example, alcohol prep wipe, hand sanitizer, or an astringent or toner. We all know that um, alcohol exaggerates a predisposition test, so it should never be used in the process of doing the predisposition test. Once the area has been cleansed, um, the candidate should dispose of that cotton round that they use to cleanse that area, and then take another cotton round or cotton ball and dry that area off. Once they've done that, they can take a Q-tip and, and go into their color bowl and retrieve a small amount of color and then place that right directly behind the ear. Once they've done so, they could leave that there for the remainder of the, this portion of the exam or they can leave it there for the entire exam. A lot of times the candidates want to demonstrate that they understand that this is a 24 hour to 48 hour process and a lot of times they'll leave that color behind the ear to demonstrate that. But either or would be fine if they remove it directly after this portion of the exam or if they leave it there for the entire portion of the exam would be okay. The candidate is required to demonstrate the strand test process. The candidate should subsection um, a small area of hair containing 10 to 15 hair strands. They should place it on a foil and um, take a small applicator brush, uh, up, up, apply it in the color, get a small amount of color and apply it to those 15 to 20 strands of hair. There's no processing time for this because it's a simulated product and this is all simulated. The candidate is required to take their spray bottle of water, spray that area and wipe it clean. Once it's wiped clean, they can dispose of the towel into soil linens or if it's a paper towel, dispose of it in the trash. And this would conclude the strand test process. Again, the candidate is required to maintain the drape throughout the section Items to be disinfected, soil, linens, and trash should all be disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. Again, that applicator brush should not be placed across the color bowl. It should be placed in items to be disinfected immediately after the application of color. Once all of the candidates have been evaluated and scored, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. 
chemical relaxer virgin application 15 minutes. You will perform a chemical hair relaxer virgin application. You will apply simulated relaxer product on one back quadrant section of the hair. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You'll have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated and the candidates are told, you may begin. All the candidates are evaluated to make sure that the hair relaxer supplies are labeled in English and the implements and supplies that they're gonna use for this portion of the exam are visibly clean. The candidates should subsection the hair for the relaxer application. This subsection should not exceed one half inch. The candidates should apply the simulated relaxer product. Again, applying the simulated relaxer product should be applied at mid shaft. And then the candidates should work their way down to the base, but not exactly on the base. They should smooth the product out to the ends of the hair going in one direction. This should not be a back and forth uh, process in the smoothing of the, the process. The candidate um, then should maintain the drape throughout the section. In the smoothing process, the candidate is, uh, can use their gloved hand or gloved finger to do this process they could use the spine of a comb. They could also use the handle of that applicator brush that they applied that product to. Um, they're required to do a full quadrant, unlike cosmetology, we're only required to do a subsection. The uh, barbers are required to do a full quadrant. Um, the subject matter experts determine that cosmetologists do more relaxer applications um, in the process of learning and the barbers uh, do it um, not as frequent, so they're required to do a full quadrant. All items to be disinfected, soil, linens, and trash should all, again, be disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. Once the candidates have stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. Hair color retouch with colored simulated product, 15 minutes. You will perform a hair color retouch application. You will apply simulated hair color product on one section of the back of the hair. The client has one inch of regrowth. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are repeated. The candidate is told, you may begin. The candidates uh, hair color retouch supplies are evaluated to make sure that they're labeled in English and the implements and supplies are visibly clean, showing no previous use. The candidate is required to subsection the hair for the color retouch. This subsection should not exceed one half inch. The candidate must apply a simulated hair color product. Again, applying that product out to one inch to demonstrate that they understand that this is a one inch retouch application. The product should not exceed that one inch. There should be a clear demarcation or a line of demarcation to demonstrate to show where the product started at the base and stopped at one inch out of the client's hair. The examiner's gonna check the final result of the hair color retouch application. The examiner's gonna look to make sure that there are no highs and lows. And what I mean by highs and lows, there are no dry areas and oversaturated areas, that the product was dispensed evenly throughout the panel of hair and throughout the quadrant. The candidate should have maintained the drape throughout the section and all items to be disinfected, soil, linens, and trash should be disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. Once all the candidates have stepped back and they have been scored, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. At this time, uh, we have additional services for barbering. We have blow dry and styling. And if you'll just give me a second, I'll get to that area. Okay, blow dry styling, 20 minutes. 
You will perform blow dry styling. You will blow dry the entire head using a round brush and a vented or paddled brush. Your style must be, I'm sorry, your, your style must have a smooth finish with beveled ends. You will be expected to saturate the hair prior to the service. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You'll have 20 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have 10 minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are um, repeated and your candidates are told you may begin. In 2.1, the candidates are evaluated to make sure that the blow dry supplies are labeled in English. In 2.2, all of the implements and supplies are visibly clean. In 2.3, the candidates should saturate the hair of the mannequin and then demonstrate the safe use of the blow dryer and attachments. The, can the candidate should use consistent movements with the dryer to demonstrate not to burn the scalp region. In 2.4, the candidate should demonstrate that they have control of the round brush or the vented paddle uh, brush not to tangle the hair or pull or tug in an aggressive way. In 2.5, the candidate will be evaluated on the final result of the blow dry style. The style should have a smooth finish with beveled edges. In 2.6, the candidate should have maintained the drape throughout the section and all items to be disinfected, soil linens and trash should have been disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. Once the candidates have completed this, they've stepped back. The proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they've completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. And next, I'm gonna go to thermal curling. Barber Styling has an additional service, thermal curling, 10 minutes. You will have two minutes to set up the supplies for thermal curling section of this examination. Do not demonstrate any procedure until the verbal instructions have been given and you are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated for the candidates and then they are told you may begin. Once all the candidates have set up all the supplies for thermal curling and have stepped back, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. You will perform thermal curling. You will prepare your client for the service. You will form two curls on the top of the head and two curls on one side of the head in a front quadrant section. A complete curl must be formed from base to end. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You'll have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions are repeated and the candidates are told, you may begin. In 13.1, the thermal curling supplies are labeled in English. In 13.2, the candidates are evaluated to make sure that all of the implements and supplies are visibly clean. In 13.3, all candidates are evaluated on testing the temperature of the iron. The candidate should use a tissue or a neck strip to test the temperature. The candidate should not arrive to the exam with the neck strip or paper already between the clamp and the barrel of the iron. If so, this will be marked off as this is a form of cheating and it prompts the candidate to do a test. In 13.4, the candidate is required to subsection the hair for thermal curling. If the iron has a two inch barrel, then the subsection should not be more than two inches wide and the panel should not exceed more than two thirds the length of the barrel. In 13.5, the candidate should demonstrate the safe use of the iron. The iron must have a cord attached and the cord must dangle. The cord should not strike the client in the face and should not get uh, wrapped around the neck of the client. The candidate should use a non-metal comb at the base to protect the scalp region. In 13.6, the candidate will be evaluated on the final appearance of the four curls. The curl should be smooth and free of crimp marks and show a curl pattern from base to end. In 13.7, the candidate must maintain the drape throughout the section. If that drape were to slide or fall, the candidate should stop immediately, reposition the drape, and then continue on with the task. 
and 13.8 items to be disinfected, soiled linens, and trash should be disposed of in the correct manner throughout the section. For example, that tissue paper that was used to test the temperature of the iron should not be placed within the workspace of the candidate, but it should go directly into the trash of the three bag system. Once the candidates have stepped back and all have been evaluated, the proctor reads, all candidates have indicated that they have completed this section of the examination. We will now proceed. 